Uh. And look at Randy Orton slithering. Oh, watch out, watch out, watch out, watch out, watch out. Oh. Here's the cover. Hey, what's up guys, and we're back here today with the video we promised in yesterday's video, if you were watching that. We're going to look at how I kind of approach scouting on the newest map, five months old, Kaunas. Uh, I totally mispronounced that, but that's okay. But first, looking at the map from the number one spawn, which is what the gameplay is going to be uh, of. So, if you're starting from what is the northwest corner, I guess, northwest spawn, I generally make a beeline straight for this first X where the arrow is pointing. Um, and where you see the dash lines coming from, that's the initial position. That's where you're going to get most of the spotting done, uh, mainly because it allows you to get vision onto their hill. If you poke out far enough uh, on both sides, on the actual hill itself and the ramp to the left of it, uh, and also gives you some vision, uh, possibly for very quick moments, if you're quick on the trigger uh, or just want to get to the spotting, on what the enemy team is doing into a couple of gaps where they can push up on the east side of the map so you can get some spots there as well and that's the initial spot that's probably where you're going to get most of your actual assist damage generally speaking and that's going to be the usual play uh past that on the spawn you're going to it's kind of be based off how the enemy team is deploying the game i actually showcase today uh the team actually doesn't push up the red team i should say uh for the number two spawn you see on the map they don't actually push up the uh, towards the northeast, so I actually go up this other arrow, uh, up towards the north, and go around this way, uh, up to the north and flank around their base and get some more spotting, but that doesn't always happen. Um, it's kind of a variable at the account how many tanks you spot, if you can, uh, crossing up towards the uh, northeast on their side. So kind of kind of bear that in mind on how you're going to approach it. Uh, if they have a lot of tanks turning that way, it's probably best just to stick around that initial kind of position and also kind of rotate to the right of it in this kind of donut kind of shape where you're at. And it's a pretty strong position for scouts. Uh, it's probably the best position for that north spawn. But it's kind of how I approach that spawn, and you'll see that in the video, and I talk more about that. Uh, but looking at the number two spawn, the other one that doesn't have a gameplay of it, um, it's kind of pretty much a mirror opposite of the other spawn where you're going to want to go. Uh, there's another like little corner here, right? We see this uh, line going from the spawn to this first X on the red. And again, you see the dotted lines kind of showcasing where you're going to get vision uh, spread out across. So you're going to get them up crossing uh, up on the north if there's any tanks doing that. And anybody trying to set up near the windmill uh, up to the right as well. You don't get as many spots, uh, especially anybody really sniping, but you can still get some decent uh, spotting damage there as well and vision on what they're doing. Uh, and then if you're feeling brave enough or they don't send enough tanks here, you can actually move up a little bit. Little bit. There's another little hill directly in front of that, but that's a little bit of a riskier play and should only really be attempted if they don't have many tanks uh, up near the windmill or they're all dead, then you can kind of push up towards that second uh, X where the line is going and then kind of go from there. And another position I kind of just noted, it's not really scout dependent, but this other red X on the map kind of by itself is another strong position. Uh, it's not just for scouts, but just something to keep in mind. The other side does not get that position, but this is a pretty strong uh, spot here. It's kind of near the city, but it's not quite... And you see, I have the entire city pretty much covered in yellow, which is saying, please just don't go there in light tanks, at least initially. Uh, it's pretty much useless for that. So, again, yeah, these spots only really work uh, for the initial positioning. Again, I can't really explain the, how the entire map is going to play, play out, because obviously that switches between matches, and you're going to have to just... Uh, adapt based on what happens, but these are generally pretty surefire ways to at least start the game off of, and then a couple strategies to maybe branch off of and kind of go from there. And I also noted where uh, artillery generally likes to sit on this map, so if you're looking for already in light tanks, something new to add to it. The green ones kind of notate where the number one teams already generally kind of sit in that kind of position. 
And the number two, the really obvious position in the southeast corner is where the Ardia usually sits from their team uh, most of the time. Uh, you'll sometimes see people down near the actual spawn, but a lot of times you'll see a lot of them climb up into this corner up on a little uh, hill, which can be kind of tricky because they can shotgun anybody going up there. But it's kind of the approach of it. Hopefully that makes sense. And now we're going to look at the number one side in action in the Tusk right now um so hopefully that goes well and uh yeah i wish i had footage for both spawns but i'm sure you guys will eventually see uh the number two spawn in a video as well at some point and again this all kind of goes out the door like i said yesterday when you have an encounter or i think team destruction is slightly different maybe on this or it's, it's an assault variant where the spawns are actually in the uh northeast and southwest of the map so again from the number one spawn here, uh, or the green spawn, we're going to about the D6, C6 kind of area, like right where those two meet. And yeah, that's where we're going to try to start this game off at. So again, we're in the Tusk, again, another derp tank, so it's going to be a little tricky actually getting any damage off here, uh, especially at those crossings on the zero line. It's pretty much impossible unless you <sighs> miraculously lead the shots, but it's okay, it's still a good example of how this game, or how this kind of strategy plays out for this map for light tanks. Uh, I see a lot of people, a lot of lights, they kind of just, either they push right up along the map borders, which isn't fantastic, or as the usual YOLO scouts are just running around in the field, which you're going to kind of see that in the initial part of this. As you see, I'm hugging this rock right here, that's what I'm talking about. Unfortunately, the map I picked out... As we spot out, their HMH-58 did not have the grid squares on it, which is kind of unfortunate, but oh well. I uh, hope you can get an idea of where that's at. And you see, sure enough, like 1315 pushing way, way too far forward. We don't have the gun really to hit him, but we should take a snapshot just, just in case because sometimes dumb luck is there. But again, we're hugging this rock right here, and it's kind of there's a donut feature to my right. And this is a super, super strong position, uh, at least I find... Uh, generally works for most tanks, honestly. At least a lot of light light tanks, medium, stuff like that. Stuff I usually play. And here we go, reading the assisted or spotting on these guys on their uh, kind of sniper hill. You see a lot of tanks sit up there on this map. A lot of TDs. And sure enough, we pick up a nice 918 assisted damage from our already nuking one of them. And we also spot the Conway and a Death Star up there as well. And again, just spotting them up. You're probably going to get lit here, uh, maybe. As you see, 412 meters, that is the thing with this map, this map in particular, is that it's very, it's, it's not that big. Uh, the distances are generally pretty uh, small. So if you do fire and there's not much in the way of bushes or such to use or double bush. So basically, you get spotted a lot of the time, even in light tanks, unless you have very, very good crew or better camo, stuff like that. But generally speaking, you're going to get spotted if you fire uh, on this tiny, tiny map that is this. And so far, it's a, we were taking this game very, very quickly. But from that initial spot, even within two and a half minutes, or two minutes even, uh, I was able to see that they didn't really send anything over here. I'm pretty confident in my crew. And again, this is something you just have to play by ear on what the match is doing. If they send a lot of tanks over this way, you can't make this play. But if they don't like this, then I'm going to take the opportunity and move over to this kind of position. Uh, as the 183 does not spot us because he pushes behind a tree right there. But we've already picked up 1600 assisted. We spotted four tanks. Again, you're probably not going to get like proc numbers on this map. But rather than just kind of struggling and knowing, okay, what do I actually do on this little tiny map in a light tank? And how do I get any kind of uh, assisted or be useful to the team in my role? Uh, this is generally works for me. If something else works for you, great. Uh, I'd love to hear it, uh, honestly, because this is the only thing I really do most of the time. I do mix things up every once in a while just to try new things, but generally speaking, this is the way to go for myself, at least, <coughs> as my voice cracks to like a 13-year-old. But, uh, <laughs> and at this point, we basically have them pinned on this hill and you see we're losing our camera or we're losing our spot. But as soon as we fire at 386 meters, even the Conway is going to spot us there. Um, and we are picking up fairly consistent uh, 
assisted damage at this point. As Weird is taking full-fledged advantage of them totally not deploying to this flank. And again, at this point, this map is basically just a free flow kind of engagement on, okay, what what are they doing and playing off where the enemy team is at versus deploying an actual map strategy. And I can't help uh, really talk to that kind of a point in terms of how to approach this map. It's just kind of based off where the enemy team is at at this point matches. So unfortunately there's no map guide on how to do that, uh, at least personally. You have to kind of just know the hell engaging targets and stuff like that. So. This is pretty much a lopsided win. It's nothing crazy. Like I said, the result wasn't the point of this video. I recorded it because I thought it was a pretty good example of what I like to do on this map. And it gives you some decent spotting numbers, at least. Like I said, I don't expect you, and you shouldn't expect to do even what I have right now in assisted. This is actually a pretty decent result, assisted-wise. Because, again, another double-edged sword with it being so small is that a lot of time people can actually spot for themselves on this map. So, getting the full amount of assisted damage like I have for a lot of the stuff this game is kind of rare. Uh, generally you can end up sharing it or splitting it with people, especially if you're in a platoon with a lot of people that have or other people that have good crews. Um, y you can easily split that stuff up very very easily. And at this point we're just hunting down the last kind of few tanks that they have on their team which is the 1305, the S tank which we spot camping in the back like an RDPs because you know S tanks. Uh, that's what they do. That's completely okay. We try to free aim the 3205 and it doesn't come off. But we know where the Artie's at. Like I said, we don't spot him near the base. So, yeah, he's up in the corner like I noted. And as soon as we finish the 3205 off as the S tank gives a little bit more assisted and boof, good night, sir. We're going right for our little friend in the RDP sitting in the corner up on his hill. And especially now that he has fired and missed. It is a batch out already, uh, the tier 9, I think, so he is going to reload in time for us. And hopefully we do not get shotgunned for full health. That is always the risk uh, of trying to take out this corner. So if you are an arty yourself, which, uh, other words for that, but I can't talk, actually. Um, blind fire this corner, because honestly, it's like a given. There's probably somebody else in already up there almost. Uh, at least it's worth a shot. And sure enough, we poke up and there he is. And he does shoot us, but thankfully does not pen somehow. And uh, yeah, we finish him off for our third kill that game. And not a, a good result, as I said, solid result. But again, more the focus was on how I approached that and kind of giving you guys an idea of what I was showing on the map and how that uh, plays out in person, I guess. So hopefully this was helpful if you're looking how to purchase map in a light tank. Uh, I think it should be. Hopefully I didn't make too much of a mess of it. And uh, yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed that. So I don't know what the next video will entail, but it may just be a very gameplay commentary or whatever, maybe on what's coming Tuesday with crossplay, but we'll get that bridge when we, uh, or cross that bridge when we get there. So see you guys and uh, peace.